Cars, trucks, buses, or whatever vehicles that travel on today's roads can benefit from wheel alignment. Wheel alignment that is tried and true brought to you by True Line Laser Alignment, the leading provider of portable laser guided wheel alignment systems in America. This is True Line's TL12 laser guided alignment system. The system will align vehicles from the smallest passenger cars, trucks, and RVs. The system operates with ordinary D-cell flashlight batteries. It is completely portable and does not require a dedicated alignment bay. You can use turntables and slip plates on the floor, wheel stands, pulling racks, pits, and muffler racks. Almost any setup will work. The components of the TL12 system are the TL28 wheel clamps that easily mount on the inside or outside of the rims from 14 to 20 inches in diameter. An optional extension kit can be added to the clamps to reduce or extend the diameter by 6 inches. Aluminum feet will minimize any possible damage to expensive rims. There are run-out adjustment knobs and a mounting disc on which all the gauges mount to the wheel. Clamps are first mounted on the wheels without gauges attached in case the clamp is accidentally dropped. The TL40 Calibration Bar All of the gauges are stored on the calibration bar. This allows a technician to verify calibration in seconds before each alignment. The TL36 right and TL37 left laser guns. The laser guns are powered by ordinary D-cell flashlight batteries and have no cables to trip over or battery packs to recharge. They shut off automatically so you can get hundreds of alignments from an ordinary set of batteries. The lasers are projected across the front wheels and to the rear gauges. Toe adjustments are set with precision dials that read in inches, degrees, and millimeters. The TL38 right and TL39 left rear combination gauges. The rear gauges have reflecting mirrors and centering scales. The gauges also have precision dials for four-wheel toe readings and adjustments. Rear camber also can be read with this scale simultaneously with toe. The TL30 Easy Check Angle Gauge. This gauge measures caster, camber, and SAI KPI. It is used to make live caster adjustments as well as run out. All of the gauges have shock resistant outer cases to minimize the chance of damage in the event that they are dropped. The system is accurate, easy to use, and cost effective. You can expect years of reliable service. For a complete package, we offer the TL12 Deluxe, which includes stands, turntables, slip plates, and a level compensator for non-level surfaces. Now that we have viewed all the components of the system, we will calibrate the unit. First, we will start with the Easy Check Angle Gauge. The technician places the gauge on the disc at the end of the calibration bar and then adjusts the red balance knob until the gauge is level by looking at the master bubble located in the bar. Adjust the camber screw on the Easy Check angle gauge until the camber bubble reads zero. Place a combination gauge on the balance disc and repeat the camber zeroing procedure for each of the combination gauges. Then place the combination gauges on the discs next to the mirror bar. Verify that the camber scales on the combination gauges read equal and opposite. Please note that because of the balance disc on the end of the calibration bar, there is no need to have the bar on a level surface. Move the laser guns from their storage discs in the center of the bar out to the end discs opposite the mirror bar and push down to lock the guns onto the disc. Turn on one of the laser guns, tilt it up, and point the laser at the mirror bar. The object here is to make the laser reflect back into its hole at the number 5. If the laser beam does not reflect back into the hole, Adjust the beam by moving the toe adjustment knob on top of the laser box. Loosen the knob by using a 1 16th inch hex key and turn the dial ring until the line is on zero. Verify the laser is in the hole and tighten the dial ring. Repeat this procedure for the other laser gun. Once the laser guns are calibrated, lower the laser guns and point them to the rear combination gauges. Verify the lasers are visible on the centering scales of the combination gauges and they are equal and opposite. 
Verify the rear combination gauge tow dials are set at zero and the lasers reflect back into the hole at the number five on each laser gun. If the laser does not reflect back into the hole, adjust the tow dial on the combination gauge, moving the laser back into the hole at the number five on the laser gun. Reset the dial ring and repeat on the other combination gauge. Once all the tow dials are at zero and the lasers reflect back into the holes, the TL-12 system is calibrated and ready to use. Alignments can be performed almost anywhere. On a dedicated alignment lift, on the floor or on stands with turntables and slip plates. The TL-28 clamp can be mounted either on the inside or outside of the rim. The user can offset the disc to accommodate low body conditions, oversized tires, undersized tires, medium duty trucks, and RVs. Mount the TL-28 clamp to the wheel and make certain that it is secure. Lift the vehicle so that the wheel spins freely. We will now perform the runout procedure. Use the Easy Truck Angle Gauge with the clamp in the 12 o'clock position. Use the red knob as a reference point. Zero the caster scale and then spin the wheel until it's in its six o'clock position. Take a reading of the caster scale and adjust the red knob so the caster bubble moves halfway back to zero. Spin the wheel to the three o'clock position and zero the caster scale. Then spin the wheel to the nine o'clock position and take a reading. Adjust the two black knobs on the wheel clamp until the caster bubble moves halfway back to zero. With the end result being that when the wheel is rotated, the caster bubble does not move more than one eighth of a bubble. Repeat this procedure on the other wheels. When the runout compensation is complete, release the pins on the turntables and slip plates, lower the vehicle onto the plates and jounce to settle the suspension. show you how to take camber, caster, and SAI KPI readings of the vehicle. We will have first place the brake pedal depressor in the vehicle locking the brakes so the vehicle does not roll during the procedure. Now we will take camber readings. Place the gauge on the disc and read camber. The reading here is a half a degree. Repeat this for all the wheels that have camber adjustment. After taking the camber readings, move to caster. Rotate the wheel out 20 degrees. Level the gauge, zero the caster scale, and turn the wheel in 40 degrees. Level the gauge and read the caster. Here the caster is five and a half degrees. Now we will read SAI KPI. Rotate out 20 degrees. Roll the gauge on the disc until the top scale reads zero and lock the gauge. Rotate the wheel in 40 degrees, read SAI KPI. The Easy Check Angle Gauge can also be used to make live caster adjustment. Please refer to the user manual for this procedure. Camber, caster, and SAI KPI adjustments affect toe. Therefore, any adjustments must be done before adjusting toe. Remember that because caster and camber adjustments affect toe, they must be done first. Now that we have taken our caster and camber readings and made any adjustments, we will proceed to reading and setting the toe. Lock the steering wheel in the straight ahead position with the steering wheel holder. Hang the laser guns on the front wheels pointing to the rear wheels. Push down to lock the laser guns, level them, and verify the tow dials are set to zero. Hang the combination gauges on the rear wheels with the mirrors pointing towards the laser guns and verify that the tow dials are set to zero. Turn the laser guns on and point them towards the rear gauges. Adjust the left laser. Pivot the cross tow laser to the right laser gun mirror underneath the vehicle until it reflects back onto the left laser box. Move to the right laser gun and adjust the toe dial until the laser drops into the hole. Then read the toe scale. The reading on the toe dial is twice the total toe condition. Divide in half, this is the total toe reading. 
dial in the desired tow condition on both laser guns, either from the vehicle specifications or from other specialty equipment. For example, the specification calls for 1 16th of an inch of tow. Dial 1 16th on both sides. This is the total tow specification. Adjust the tie rods evenly and verify the cross tow laser drops into the hole. The tow is set and from here the vehicle center line adjustments can be performed. Now that the total tow has been set, the vehicle center line must be adjusted to ensure that the front wheels are entering along the vehicle's geometric center line after the front tow has been adjusted. After adjusting the tow on the front of the vehicle, observe the location of the laser line on the rear center engages. The left laser line is on the number three. On the right, the laser line is on the number five. This indicates that although the tow is correct, the vehicle is steering to the left. Adjust the tie rods evenly in the same direction to move the laser lines on the centering gauges back to the same number on each gauge. For this example, that number is four. Verify the cross tow laser remains in the hole. The rear centering gauges tow dials can be set at zero or with the desired total rear tow. A vehicle center line adjustment is required in all tow adjustment procedures. After this procedure is done, perform a thrust angle or a full four wheel alignment. Now that the total tow and the vehicle center line have been set, fixed rear drive vehicles can have thrust angle adjustments if adjustment is available where the front wheels are aligned to where the rear wheels are driving. After adjusting the tow on the front of the vehicle and the vehicle center line, observe the location of the laser line on the thrust angle scale of the laser guns. On the left, the laser line is on the number three. On the right, the laser line is on the number five. This indicates that although the tow is correct, the vehicle is driving to the right. Adjust the tie rods evenly in the same direction to move the laser lines on the thrust angle scale back to the same number on each gauge. The numbers should read equal and opposite. For this example, the laser is just outside the number four. Verify the cross tow laser remains in the hole. The rear centering gauge tow dials are set at zero for this adjustment. Next, we will show you a full four wheel alignment. the total tow and vehicle center line have been set, full four wheel alignment can be performed, where all four wheels have tow adjustments and are aligned to the vehicle center line. Set the desired tow reading on all the gauges and verify that the cross tow laser is in the hole. This assures the laser beams are parallel going down the side of the vehicle. Adjust the rear suspension until the laser beam drops back into the hole at the number five on the thrust angle scale. This completes a full four wheel alignment. Refer to the manual for the procedure of reading total four-wheel tow. Resetting the steering angle sensor is an important last step in the alignment procedures. Ensuring the sensor has been reset and is properly calibrated after the alignment, this will reduce comebacks, improper tire wear, and correct data being sent to the vehicle's electronic controls. Please consult the vehicle manufacturer for the correct reset procedures. The tools for this process are readily available in the market. Alignments with the TrueLine Laser Alignment System can be done almost anywhere. A level surface is not required. Use the TLT44 level compensator bar in conjunction with the TL30 Easy Check Angle Gauge to compensate for a non-level surface. To measure camber, place the bar in front of the vehicle and place the Easy Check Angle Gauge on the disc that is on the left side of the bar, same as the left side of the vehicle. Then adjust the camber screw on the Easy Check Gauge to zero. The gauge is now compensated for camber measurement on the left side of the vehicle. Take the gauge over to the vehicle and place it on the wheel clamp disc which has been run out as demonstrated earlier and measure camber. Repeat this process for the other side of the vehicle. To measure caster, place the bar on the side of the vehicle that is to be measured. Place the easy check gauge on one of the discs. Adjust the camber screw to bring the camber bubble back to zero. Then take the gauge and place it on the opposite disc. Observe the change and adjust the camber screw to move the bubble halfway back to zero. 
Now move the gauge to the other side of the level compensator bar and read the tilt of the ground. Here the tilt of the ground is minus one degree. Perform the caster procedure using the ground tilt reading as your zero on the caster scale. To read SAI KPI, use the same procedure to read the side to side tilt of the ground with the level compensator in front of the vehicle and either add or subtract the tilt of the ground to the SAI KPI reading depending on the side of the vehicle being measured. Please refer to the user manual for calibration of the TLT44 level compensator bar. Larger trucks and RVs can be easily aligned with the TL12 with the addition of the TL90 dually one-ton kit. The kit consists of the TLT28 wheel clamps. The clamps can accommodate wheels from 17 inches to 27 inches. The disc can be offset to accommodate the laser guns and larger wheels. Runout is performed in the offset position. The TLT52 target stands are placed against the rear wheels for vehicle centerline measurement. TLT44 level compensator bar is for performing caster, camber, SAI, KPI measurements and adjustments on non-level services. The TLT56 digital level is for reading caster on a solid steer axle. The procedure for measuring caster on a solid steer axle with the TLT56 can be found in our TLT12 heavy duty truck alignment system video and manual. Note, turntables are required for independent suspension Grease plates are required for solid steer axles for smooth adjustments.